Today the brother comes on to Deen. Uh, now he starts looking at everyone. These people are kafar. These people are lost. These people are going to hellfire. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Who died and made you the prophet, man? The, pro- the prophet never did that. Every one of you is lost except whom I guide. Allah doesn't need, Allah doesn't need anyone. Anyone. Don't ever think, my brother. You know, people now walking around, Allahu Akbar, the brother goes to Hajj. When he comes back, you can't call him Muhammad anymore. It's Hajj Muhammad. Brother, I've been to Hajj. So please, if you don't mind, you call me Hajj Muhammad. Really? Really? What, you think that because you performed Hajj, that you're equal to something now in Allah's eyes? Is this the arrogance you have with Allah? And people get upset. Brother, I didn't spend $10,000 and sacrifice my family for four weeks only to return and you call me Muhammad. That's Hajj Muhammad. The Prophet of Allah in the authentic hadith, speaking to Sahaba, speaking to the greatest ummah that ever walked the earth, speaking to your fathers, speaking to an ummah that happily gave their lives for the pleasure of Allah. People who did the utmost, the biggest sacrifices, and they deemed themselves and the most as the most insignificant people. Today you do nothing and you think you're up there. They did everything and they thought that they were down there. The Prophet of Allah speaking to them. He says, none of you, who's he speaking to? He says, none of you will enter Jannah through your actions. None. People walking around like he's already from the people of Jannah, mashallah. People now, they worship their mashayikh. 100% brother. This guy's from Firdaus al-A'la. The Prophet of Allah saying to Sahaba, none of you will enter Jannah through your actions. None. So they asked the Prophet of Allah, even you? He says, yeah, even me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest mujahid was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest teacher was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest father was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest husband was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest mercy to humanity was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest habit to ever worship Allah Azza wa Jal was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest messenger to ever walk the earth was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest prophet to ever receive revelation was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest creation that Allah ever created was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, even me. Except and only if Allah Azza wa Jal was to show mercy upon me. Even me. And people walking around like they're something, man. Prophet of Allah tells us of a man who worshipped Allah for 500 years. 500 years he worshipped Allah. And then when he stood before Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more or less, he tells the angels, take him and enter him into the paradise through my mercy. So the man says, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh Allah. And more or less, he says, oh Allah, well I appreciate the offer. I couldn't help but hear that you said you want me to enter through your mercy. Oh Allah, I don't want to enter through your mercy. I want to enter through my actions, oh Allah. Oh Allah, I worshipped you for 500 years. For 500 years, oh Allah, I worshipped you. So I don't want to enter through your mercy. I paid my debt. I worked hard. Every day I worshipped you, oh Allah. Not the standing so you can enter me through your mercy. I want to enter through my actions. Allah says, you want to enter through your actions? Fine. No problems. 
So Allah Azza wa Jal orders the angels. He says to them, bring the scales here. He says, put the man's 500 years of worship on one end of the scale. And put, only put, just put the blessing that I gave him, the na'mah that I gave him, to be able to see with his eyes, just that, nothing more, nothing more. Just put the blessing that I gave him, to be able to see with his eyes, put that on the other end of the scale. Just the blessing to be able to see, outweighed 500 years of worship. So Allah says to the angels, take him and throw him into the hellfire. Then and only then, he says, oh Allah, please, oh Allah, please, I am content with your mercy. I'm content with your mercy, ya Allah. Allah doesn't need anyone, my brothers. The name of seeing, today we've forgotten. Today we've forgotten. Today you and I think what? That to see, I need a pair of eyes. You're wrong. Because there are millions around the world that have eyes, but they can't see. It is Allah that allows you to see. Today you think to he, I need a pair of ears. You're wrong. Because there are millions around the world that have ears. They're stuck on their heads, but they can't hear, my brother. It is Allah that allows you to hear. Today you think to walk, I need a pair of legs. You're wrong. There are millions around the world that have legs, but they can't walk. It is Allah and Allah alone that allows you to walk. Allah, not you. Allah, not you. Allah doesn't need you, my brother. Allah doesn't need me. Allah doesn't need us. And we have to understand because this is aqeedah. You have to know this so that when you worship, you are always humble. When you worship him, you never have pride. When you worship him, you never have arrogance. Because you know, at any given point in time, I am where I am only through his mercy. Only through his rahmah, I am where I am. Not because of your own actions. And to know with depth, with yaqeen, with certainty, that Allah, the King of Kings, doesn't need anyone. He doesn't need anyone, my brothers. Wallahi, everything you see around you, everything. Today, the Muslims have so much fear in their hearts. Fear. Fear of the kuffar. Fear of the West. Fear of laws. Fear of regulations. Fear of this and fear of that. But to know that Allah Azza wa Jal is not in need. Wallahi, my brothers. Wallahi, I take an oath by Allah. You have to come to terms. You have to come to believe with certainty that every single human being who ever lived, who ever is living, and whoever is to come and live on this earth, wallahi, every single human being, every single jinn, every single animal that walks on this earth, every single bird that takes the flight in the sky, every single fish that swims in the oceans of Allah Azza wa Jal, Wallahi, every single land, every single country, Wallahi, with all their governments and all their military force and all their might and all their science and all their money and all their know-how, all with the exception of none, every country, every tree, every grain of sand, every mountain, every river, every ocean, every ocean, Wallahi, Every star, every sun, every moon, every single planet, every single angel, the billions and billions and billions of angels, all of them, with the exception of none, Mikael, Jibrail, Israfil, all, the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven, the fourth heaven, the fifth heaven, the sixth heaven, the seventh heaven, the ocean above it. The eight that carry the flag of Allah, the hearts of Allah, all are dead. All are dead. Nothing moves, nothing stops, nothing makes, nothing breaks, nothing gives, nothing takes, nothing rises, and nothing falls, nothing harms, and nothing benefits in Allah. And 
can do this. Yakin and faith is in your heart. That nothing, that everything is dead, everything, except the law. Allah doesn't need anything, anyone. No prophet, no angels, no jinn, no ints. We need him. He's al Hayyul Qayyum. He's the ever living. <coughs> so you might say, brother, I'm alive. What's so special about that? I'm living. Yeah, but your living is dependent on his existence. He's the first with no beginning. He's the last with no ending. He's Allah. He is Allah. Al-Malik. 